We're in Darling Harbour in the International Convention Centre and IBM has turned on a really big show. talk about some of the amazing things that's coming up through the day but I thought I would just grab a couple of quick seconds with you here on camera to show you what's behind me. Have a look. We are at IBM's Sydney event of Think Australia 2018 and I have the pleasure of being joined by John Smith. Hi John, how are you? Hi Des, how are you? I'm really well, thanks for joining us. Now John, you're part of the IBM Research Group. Uh, could you just quickly introduce yourself and who you are and what you do? Yeah, sure. So uh, my name is John Smith and I'm an IBM Fellow. I work in the Research Division. So it's a small lab. Our division is oh, only about 3,000 people or so. And I work on AI. Give us a bit of uh, detail about what that means. I mean, AI is a very broad topic these days, uh, and we see everything from, I guess, you know, where people think Siri and Google Assistant are an AI, which is not necessarily through to machine learning, deep learning, whatnot. Um, when you talk about AI and when you discuss it amongst your team, what do you understand AI to be? Right. So you mentioned deep learning. I think that's a great example. Okay. So, uh, you know, a lot of what uh, the recent excitement in AI has been about is, of course, deep learning. It's had huge impact. You know, so really, if you think about problems like image recognition or uh, machine translation for languages or speech transcription, uh, natural language processing of different kinds, even chatbots. Right. A lot of that is being enabled by algorithms like deep learning. Tell us where your focus is currently, like what are you working on? What projects have you got currently that are the big exciting thing you're working on and what part of humanity are they going to help? <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, IBM has a lot of capabilities in this direction, uh, for example, an offering that we call Watson Studio. Yep. And essentially, you know, you can think of that as a cloud-based platform by which you can go and develop uh, your own deep learning models and, and so on. And it handles all kinds of sophisticated learning. So uh, maybe you have very large data sets or you have very complex models that require multiple computers to be working mm -hmm. on at the back end. The good thing is Watson Studio simplifies all of that for the developers. So Essentially, they don't have to think about, well, how am I going to get the GPUs or yep. you know, where is this going to run and, and so on. I'm a big fan of the platform. I, um, I was involved in the launch recently with uh, Watson Explorer. I love the whole packaging of download and go, the fact that it runs Docker containers under Kubernetes on my Mac or Linux or Windows machine. I don't have to know anything about the technology. I can run local stuff and get it working to the where I want and I can burst it effectively out to the cloud and scale as you said. Exactly. But something else we're looking to do is also to get people more hands-on with quantum computing. Right. Right. So that's that, the next big exciting part, right? That's probably my favorite of the five. Absolutely. So, you know, so the promise of quantum computing is, is really enormous. You know, it's, it's great. However, it's been really something that's been in the realm of research labs for many decades, you know, 50 years or, or more. Yeah. Um, so IBM has taken some very proactive steps here to actually uh, make tools available to really anyone to play with quantum computing. And the reason this is important is because the concepts of programming a quantum computer are actually very different. You know, we often say, you know, don't think classically when you're working with quantum computing. So, you know, to facilitate, you know, much wider uh, thinking, participation, uh, we've created something called the, the quantum experience, uh, something called Quiz Kid, which yep. is really a software development kit. You know, our, our idea is to really, you know, to make this much more accessible, uh, to get more ideas flowing sure. around um, how quantum computers can be used, what kinds of challenges, and we've seen a tremendous uptake so far. More than three million experiments, you know, more wow. than 80,000 people have, have done using our quantum computers.